Hey there, First United Methodist Church of Lawrenceville. Uh, during this season, we're sharing our story because all of our stories are a part of the story of this church. And so today we get to hear a couple of folks' stories. So uh, we're going to hear from Kay Stanley and Whitney Ricker, and uh, they're going to share a little bit of their story and how they found themselves here at First Methodist and what this place has really meant to them and their lives or their families. So uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So Whitney, you want to start? Sure. Um, I'm Whitney Ricker. Um, my family and I have been coming here since 2016. Um, I'm married to my husband, Justin, and we have two children, Jackson, who's eight and is in second grade, and Rebecca Grace, who is five and in kindergarten. You've probably seen them run all over the place. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's us. Okay, why don't you uh, share a little bit of, about your family and, and how you found yourself here at First Methodist. Well, I'm Kay Stanley, and I came here in about 2003, and I was invited by some single friends. At that time, I was single, and I was invited by some single friends who was doing a line dancing class on the stage in the family center. And so I came and hung out, and we did line dancing, and all of a sudden, I knew so many people, it's like, wow, this is a cool place. And I was feeling kind of not connected at the previous church uh, in the area. And uh, so I started coming here uh, about a year and a half ago. I married my Sunday school teacher. Uh, big scandal. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we have been friends. Ed and I have been friends for a really long time. We've been married a year and a half. And uh, we have three kids, three grown kids, and um, we have three grandkids. So. so Whitney, you and Kay have a, a, a special relationship. Like I, I just love seeing the two of you, I, two of you engage each other and, and the way your families have kind of come together. Tell me that story. How did that come about? Okay, so we were kind of looking for a church that really felt like home. And we wanted a church that had a great children's program. Uh, Rebecca Grace was about one, and Justin, or Jackson, was four at the time. <laughs> Justin was a little older. Um, and like I said, we wanted something with a really good children's program, and music has always been important to me. And we just, we wanted a place where we felt at home. So I came a couple times and met Kay. She was very, very welcoming. And then um, there was a Wednesday that I was downstairs and uh, Jackson, my son, was in choir and her granddaughter, Alexa, was uh, in children's choir together. And I was just sitting on the floor doing some work and Kay came up and we started chit-chatting and um, she invited me to join Rejoice. And it just kind of blossomed from there and now she's Nana Kay and we spend the holidays together and it's just really if it hadn't been for her, I would like to think that that we would have kept coming and I, I believe that we really would have because it, we really feel at home in this church but she is really the main reason why um why we kept coming and we are grateful to have her in our family okay you've told me a little bit about the other end of that story talk to me about that you when you met whitney what what well, when I met Whitney, it was a Sunday morning, and at that point, I was not singing in the choir, I was in the congregation. And um, I noticed this, you know, beautiful young woman sitting by herself, and I wasn't sitting very far away, so when we did kind of the welcoming thing where everybody said hello, I said hello and um, introduced myself and asked her name and that sort of thing, and so, and then she came back the next week. And, you know, at that point in time, there weren't a lot of young people coming and so we just kind of talked and so then when I saw her 
you know, in the hallway. We just kind of connected. I found out she was a teacher, and I was a retired educator. So it was just really, really easy. And then we found out that, um, you know, we both enjoyed music and that she sings, and so I invited her to rejoice. We connected over the kids because, of course, I love kids. And, um, you know, her her children are just absolutely precious. So just over time, we've just developed this great friendship that I am incredibly blessed by. Both of you, I mean, your families have have kind of grown in a way in this place. So talk to me around that, just, you know, some of the ways that you've sensed God move in your life through this this church one of the things that just kind of happened naturally was Whitney and I doing Bible school together and that has been an incredible experience because we both have heart a heart for missions and so Catherine Lombard had asked Whitney um, to be the teacher of the kids going from fifth grade to sixth grade and that's kind of a challenging age in a lot of ways they're trying to figure themselves out and so with the idea of doing it as sort of a field trip missions experience and then Whitney asked me I think it was the second year you did that to join you and to be a part of that and I'm just passionate about kids and I'm passionate about missions and she and I figured out that we work really well together Uh, I love her being the lead teacher and me being the helper (laughs) because for so many years I was the lead teacher and so it was a, it's, it's been a beautiful transition of life. And I feel like that's been an opportunity for me to really grow. Because you know, you can learn a lot from kids. And you can learn a lot from younger people. And so being able to be in relationship through that opportunity with VBX and being able to go out on missions with those kids and to work together with Whitney as a partner, that was, that's certainly been one way that, that I've grown. And I'm just, I'm really going to piggyback off that. I think God bringing us together has helped with that. Um, some of churches in the past, you know, wasn't super involved. Now, growing up, I was in my church, but I think as an adult, kind of having a hard time trying to find my place. And through Kay, us starting with, Bible school together, we're really starting with music and being able to, you know, sing those hymns and sing the praises that, you know, that really brings it out. But then through Bible school and by doing, being able to to work in the missions with Bible school, I think also has opened up us with the missions team. I mean, that that's, I never really saw myself doing that. And I think because of Kay, just being able to become more involved in the church and really finding our place of how we can help people and really support the church even more, that's been a big help. So much so that you two are co-mission chairs. Right, exactly. That's (laughs) the only way I would agree to do it. (laughs) Now running, you you went from fifth grade to running missions for the whole church. That was the deal if we do it together. (laughs) Right, right. Well, and that's when when you you have a friendship and you work well together. You know, it's just it's it's fun. It's easy. You know, it's just what you're called to do. And um, I feel very blessed to be able to uh, connect in that way and to be able to try to help with coordinating and communicating what's going on in our church about missions because we are doing some incredible things. Unpack that a little bit. Talk talk to me about what some of the things that are happening. Wow, it's like where do you even start? When you if if you look at just what we've been collecting, you know, for the co-op, Lawrenceville Co-op and the um nothing but the truth in the Village of Hope, what happened with summer lunch, uh getting volunteers involved. Um it's it's just amazing and we're still continuing to collect. I think it was 700 some odd items this past week and 1000 items the week before. The shoe event, man, what a cool thing to buy shoes for children. I didn't get to be at that event, unfortunately, but the pictures of the faces of those children getting a brand new pair of shoes, you know, what important work that we get to do to be the hands and feet of Jesus out in our community. 
that. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking of everything that we've done. I mean, the, we've got Sleep and Comfort and Peace. We've got the bed build. We've, you know, Lawrenceville Response Center, getting people in homes and things in permanent housing. Just the list goes on and on of everything that this church has helped with in the community. It, it's absolutely astonishing. And, you know, people are still giving and giving and giving, which is amazing. So we've talked a little bit about how we found ourselves here and we've, we've kind of shared the backstory of how we come to this moment. Dream a little bit with me and talk to me about what's the next chapter. What do you see for this church? What do you see for missions? What do you see for your families? I mean, personally for missions, what I would love to see is getting more and more families involved. As you said, you know, seeing the kids carrying the bags into the um, clothing mission is that's wonderful. And with the bed build, seeing, you know, families out there really getting families more involved with that because it is important for the kids, the kids to see that. Um, that would probably be something that I would, I would really like to, like to see a little bit more of. I love the intergenerational stuff. And I would love to see more and more of that, of people of all ages, all backgrounds, all cultures. Um, we are the church, and, and we don't have to all look alike and be the same age and have the same skin color. We are all children of God, and I would love to embrace that even more so that we could connect and develop genuine relationships from children all the way up to our seniors. Um, so many people are lonely. And so many people are desperate for connections. And, um, you know, I just, I, I think sometimes I look at the kids on my street that I walk by in the morning and they're on their cell phones. And I just want to go up to them and hug them and say, you know, Jesus loves you. And uh, I want to get to know you. And, and I, I love that kind of thought that as the body of Christ, we can connect with one another and truly one, love one another. You know, I, one of the most precious memories I have is seeing Jackson at the end of the hall and him saying, Nana Kay, and throwing up his arms and running towards me. Um, that means everything in the world that I'm the church Nana. And I think that intergenerational stuff, particularly at the age and stage I'm at right now, is really important. I want to pour into the lives of younger folks. And I want people of all ages to be connected and loving each other in real genuine relationships around our faith. I just, I, I hope that that can happen more and more.